Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today I'm going to give you an update on the Delta variant. The Delta variant is here to stay, and now is thought to be the cause of over 80% of new U.S. COVID-19 cases. One rumor that I think is getting too much traction is that the COVID vaccines that we have available are not effective against the Delta variant. And this may be potentially discouraging people from getting the COVID vaccine. Let's start with what we saw with an outbreak in Provincetown, Massachusetts after the July 4th weekend. This state is significant because over 70% of its eligible population has been vaccinated against COVID-19. So this is a state which should have some natural herd immunity, but what they found was surprising. They found over 900 COVID positive cases and that 75% of those infected with COVID had been fully vaccinated and nearly 80% were symptomatic, which is really surprising because the Pfizer vaccine is supposed to be 88% effective at preventing symptomatic disease. Thankfully, there have been no reported deaths, but seven people have been hospitalized and at least four of these were fully vaccinated. So what happened? This outbreak was associated with large public gatherings and shows that the Delta variant is a new player because even adults that are fully vaccinated are thought to be capable of passing along the SARS-CoV-2 Delta variant to other people. It's a wake up call for people to realize that while vaccines do a marvelous job at preventing severe COVID infections and deaths, you can still get a mild to moderate infection that can be miserable and include fevers, cough, headaches, body aches, and sore throat. For the medical community, severe means hospitalization, but mild to moderate can still be really miserable for people. But I don't think this means that the vaccines don't work or that people should suddenly get the impression that we've been duped by this. In some ways, we knew this would happen at some point, that there would be a variant that could be passed along to others, even in those that are vaccinated. And remember that while Pfizer states that 88% of those fully vaccinated should not get symptoms of COVID after their vaccine, that still leaves 12% that will get symptoms. And the vaccine did work. We would have expected more hospitalizations with those that got the Delta variant, and we don't see that at all. With over 900 cases, there have only been seven hospitalizations and thankfully no deaths. But what happened in Provincetown is a wake up call to those that think the vaccine is 100% protective and allows all precautions to be thrown to the wind. This is simply not the case. And of course, the data from Provincetown is the reason why the CDC did an about face on recommendations for mask wearing for fully vaccinated adults. Previously, they had said masks were no longer needed if you're fully vaccinated, but now they're recommending that masks be worn in public indoor settings in areas with substantial and high transmission, which is honestly most of the United States at this point. So I hear people saying, why bother getting the COVID vaccine? It doesn't work anyway. But this is absolutely not the case. The vaccines that we have available are effective against COVID-19, even from the Delta variant. Data published in the New England Journal on July 21st from over 23,000 people showed that the Pfizer vaccine is 88% effective against symptomatic disease and 96% effective against needing hospitalization from the Delta variant. I think these statistics are really impressive, but it's important to get both shots because the effectiveness against symptomatic disease drops to 33% after only one dose of the Pfizer vaccine. We don't have as much data on the Moderna vaccine, but what we do have comes from the manufacturer and they state, quote, there's a modest reduction in neutralizing titers against Delta, but they haven't produced any hard data with numbers. And lastly, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which remember is the one-shot vaccine, has reported its vaccine is effective against Delta, but one recent study, which has not been published in a scientific journal, but I'll put a link in the description, suggests that its vaccine is less effective against the variant, but they used lab studies. But this has prompted discussion over whether J&J &J recipients might need a second shot and possibly from one of the mRNA vaccines instead of a second dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But scientists have not seemed surprised that the J&J &J vaccine may be less effective 
because one shot of the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is similar to the J&J &J vaccine, but it's not currently used in the US, was only 33% effective against the Delta strain. But I wanna pause for a minute because I think this is where people get confused about the data and jump to the conclusion that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is only 33% effective. So why bother getting vaccinated? But that's not what this data means. A 33% effectiveness means that 33% of people exposed to the Delta variant did not get symptoms of COVID. But we know that these vaccines are remarkably effective at preventing severe COVID illness because about 95% of the people that are hospitalized or dying from COVID are not vaccinated. Yes, there have been breakthrough infections and the news seems to talk about these a lot. In fact, they talk about them so often that I think they're giving the impression that it's occurring more often than it actually is. Of course, what we saw in Provincetown is concerning, but this is definitely the exception. According to the CDC, less than 0.004% of people who have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 experienced a breakthrough case resulting in hospitalization and less than 0.001% have died from the disease. That's about 6,600 severe breakthrough cases out of more than 163 million fully vaccinated people. Among hospitalized or fatal breakthrough cases reported to the CDC as of July 19th, 74% were aged 65 years or older. One U.S. study observed that 44% of breakthrough infections were among people who were immunocompromised. I want to continue to stress that about 95% of the hospitalizations and deaths that we're seeing are from people that have not been fully vaccinated. The highest spread of cases and severe outcomes is happening in places with low vaccination rates. As children go back to school and we continue to resume our lives, the likelihood that you will be exposed to the Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2 is very high. The Delta variant is more transmissible than the common cold and influenza and is as contagious as chickenpox. In the past, it was thought that someone with the Alpha variant or the variant that started in Great Britain could pass it along to two and a half others if it was in an environment without masks or vaccines. But with a Delta variant, it's thought that someone can pass it along to three and a half to four other people. And previously with prior variants, exposure to COVID after vaccination meant that you were protected from contracting the virus and protected from passing it along to other people. But this is no longer true. And this is to be expected as the virus continues to mutate and get better and better at infecting and spreading. This is why everyone in the medical community, including myself, is highly recommending vaccinations because the less people the virus can infect, the less likely it will keep mutating. At the end of the day, I will continue to say it to anyone that will listen, please get the COVID vaccine. Any COVID vaccine, one is not better than another. They're safe and effective. Thanks for joining me.